Hey, I thought I would uh, take a ch moment to look at the uh, expenses on this trip. So I've been out, I think, uh, nine days so far. Five of those were spent on a fly-in uh, to a remote lake. That cost $280, $140 each way for the plane. It was worth it for me. When I was there, it was no cost. <laughs> I'm excluding food because I have to eat food if I was at home. Uh, my primary expenses after, you know, are, are for the whole trip combined fly in and here are gasoline. I'm going to estimate that I do about a total of 737 miles on this trip. And I'm rounding down the fuel economy to about 20 miles a gallon. And, uh, that would be like 36.85 gallons of gas. I'm actually doing better than that, but let's, let's you know, go with the worst case numbers. Uh, get, fuel is going to cost me about $110 for this trip. I think I'm going to be out 12 days, depending how I feel. And, uh, you know, food is cheap. The greatest thing about here in the Adirondacks is there's no charge for the campsites. I mean, it's just it's too good to be true. Today's Friday, October 11th, and uh, it's good... To try, when you're on the road, it's good to try and find a place, at least for me, it's good for me to try and find a place by Friday morning. And I, I've been here, I stayed here yesterday. Uh, I want to explore more of this area, but I'm not going to do it until Monday. Um, this is a three-day weekend, Columbus Day weekend. And a lot of people are on the road. So the places, even though there's tons of campsites up here, there won't be a problem finding a campsite. There's just a lot more people in campsites because of the weekend. And uh, that's okay with me. So if you're out and you want to stay somewhere, it's good to find your campsite in advance. Something goes wrong virtually every trip. You have to be ready for that. And uh, this trip was no different. Uh, I forgot my green tea, you know, the first part of this trip when I was out camping in a tent, I forgot my green tea, so that uh, ruined my productivity, it all went to hell, you know? And then, uh, while I was out there camping, I realized, suddenly, that I forgot my passport. I was supposed to push on to Canada from here in the Adirondacks, the northern Adirondacks. I was supposed to push on another 200 miles up into Canada up to Mount Tremblant. And that's a 500 square mile wilderness. And without your passport, they're just not gonna let you in. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you gotta be versatile. So an opportunist who finds himself in hot water takes a bath and uh, I'm no different. So first thing is I need a place to stay. Now, I did come up here last summer and I found a whole load of boondocking places and that was time well spent. Uh, I Got a shower yesterday at one of the places I learned last summer, and it's a state park. All you need to do is find a state park. If you're reasonable when you talk to the uh, to the people at the gate, you know, if you're nice and they're nice, they'll let you take a shower. I came here to uh, Lake Durant. I'm camping for like five days, and I really need a shower. Okay. Can I just pay for a shower? You sure can. Great. It's $2. $2. Last time it was free. Should I complain about that? I don't think so. So... But I need more places to stay. I want to stay out for more time. And uh, I learned from the bush pilot that this is a good place to come to. Yeah, pretty wild. And there are RVs back there, or you know, people camping? Yes. Excellent. Well, I'm going to uh, definitely look into that. I'm going to go explore it on my mountain bike soon, uh, later. But t most of today has been drying out, you know, <laughs> drying out from the from the from the tent trip. It rained like the hammers of hell. Well, it's ten after ten. The plane's not here. I can only assume that the conditions are too bad to fly in. Uh, he said low clouds and rain were conditions you wouldn't fly in, and I have both of them today. <laughs> I hope that's him. Uh, but, uh, you know, having forgotten my passport, I'm suddenly on the fly. Do I want to go to the same places I went to last year? 
or do I want to go someplace different? So of course, you know, I want to go someplace different. And uh, here's the first thing I did was make a beeline to a uh, country hardware a country hardware store and pick up some maps. And uh, what I got was uh, Adirondack Mountains, uh, Adirondack Park maps. Now these are highly detailed, and if you know what you're looking for, and uh, you know you need to spend a little time with this. I didn't use my phone. I have Google Maps on there. It's such a pain in the a to uh, to use something like that to do what I'm doing. Uh, in my case, with me, maybe I'm a geezer, but you just can't beat a map. You know, a map is uh, is is how the world runs. You know, it's fine that uh, to get the broad area on a phone screen. It's not good for me, and you know you can zoom into a little area and zoom out. It, it just is not fun to use. A map is just so superior in every way. Uh, you quickly look at it. You can write on it. You can uh, see where you've been, where you're going. It's. You know, do I need to explain this? Probably not. So that's how I ended up where I am. So I was camped here quite a bit all fall. I went home for about a week uh -huh. and uh, came back again. Hey, this is my favorite. It's the life, right? It's the yes, life. It is. I haven't been down that way yet. Have you been down there? Uh, not today. I'm going to go down a little bit. All right. Don't tell me anything. That's my surprise. I won't. I won't. I'm discovering. Yeah. Land. And that's private land then? But then it goes to the league land. Yeah. Private league land. League? What is league? Uh, the Adirondack League. You got to be like a member? Well, the Adirondack League is like a uh, a big club that owns, I guess, thousands of acres in the other end. Uh huh. So I was talking to my brother, and uh, we're both in agreement. Like riding a bicycle is as close as you'll ever come to flying like a bird. You know, carving a turn, going down a hill, coasting. It's pretty free feeling. There's a uh, handicapped campsite. Let's take a look. Looks a lot like every other campsite, but it's very flat. And I'll bet that outhouse is a roll-in outhouse. Let's take a look. Yep. Not in bad shape. <laughs> the toilet has handrails. Very nice. Nice touch. So, uh, all right, well, if you're handicapped, get out here and camp. By the Adirondack League Club, I think I'll look them up, in Old Forge, New York. All persons are hereby warned against hunting, fishing, trapping therein, or trespassing thereon for any such purpose, or for any other purpose whatsoever. Well, that's pretty clear. Well, this site is adjacent to a beautiful stream and uh, it's about a 50-foot walk from the campsite. You know, water is both good news and bad news. It's uh, good news because it's pleasant. It's bad news because it's often accompanied by bugs. But this time of year, not a problem. It's cool enough. So with one uh, candle power, it's down to 52.2. So the temperature's going down in here. It's getting going down outside also. It's pretty chilly out there. And uh, it's one candle power. I don't know what three candles would do or more. Um, I got the sleeping bag, so I'm nice and warm. I have heat in this trailer, but uh, I don't think it's cold enough to use. Um, we'll see how I feel in the morning. Good morning. Got that at 37 degrees in here. It's frost on the trailer. I'm going to try out the heater. So, uh, this heater, I put on the... Uh, Acoustic ducting, which lowers the sound level, 
and it really works great. <laughs> it's much quieter than it used to be. The furnace just kicked on. Now the air duct is over here and I have it, it has fins on it and it angles it up a little bit. I tried turning that down uh, so the air would come out and point down. I figured, well, it's hot air, it'll rise up after it points down, but it was too hot. <laughs> it was blowing on me here and it was too hot. So I put it back up. So, oh yeah, the heat's starting to come on now. The minimum, when you turn this on, I put it on the lowest setting for the heat, and that seems to bring the cabin interior up to about 65 degrees. So, uh, let's see how long that takes from 37. It's about 5 after 8. It, uh, the heat clicked off. It took 20 minutes to heat it from 37 degrees to 65 degrees in here. So that's pretty good. Um, it's really not that cold. I normally maybe wouldn't use it at this temperature, but I just wanted to see how it works from testing. Uh, so there's a little bit of moisture on the windows, very little. And The wood interior is completely dry. There's no uh, no condensation anywhere in the trailer. It's not that cold though. So the front window uh, has a little bit of uh, fog on it. I don't know if that's on the inside or the outside. It's on the inside. So not bad. It's not thermal glass, so that, you know, you didn't have to expect that. But uh, overall, very comfortable night. I sleep like a baby out here. It's totally quiet. Uh, sleeping bag is just a screamer. It's great. I'll do a review with a sleeping bag. A sleeping bag is a critical piece of a gear. So meanwhile, let me get this day underway. So the electricity usage is uh, actually lower in this temperature. Um, I'm using the heater and the refrigerator. But I've got to assume the refrigerator is just not running very much at all now because of the cooler temperatures. It's uh, only got to raise it. Only got to cool a few degrees. My guess is it's probably uh, 30 degrees outside. There's frost on the trailer and on the car. So it's uh, close to or below freezing. Well, I'll air the sleeping bag out a little bit more later. But it just stows in this cabinet. And my... uh, so the vestibule is not an insulated trailer. It's just a plywood, aluminum. But it's uh, a lot warmer than a tent. That's for sure. <laughs> so let me get some breakfast. I'm hungry. This is a uh, dining al fresco. For breakfast. My favorite. Toast. Soft boiled eggs. A little bit of fresh onion. A little bit of butter. Some green tea. First caffeine I've had in five days and I'm dying for it. And a big glass of water. Now that ought to hold me. Uh, you really have to love marketing people. Uh, this package says uh, it's whipped butter, so they whip air into it. And it says 45% less fat than regular butter. And that's because it has 45% less butter. It's mostly air. When you forget your toothbrush motor, you're left with just a toothbrush. And that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to get some exercise today. <laughs> I'm always forgetting something. <laughs> Luckily, it was the motor and not the head because I have trouble brushing my teeth with the motor. But uh, I'm thinking I'm going to brush my teeth and take down camp and maybe move on somewhere else 
Uh, it's early enough. It's uh, it's 10 o'clock. Oh, it's almost 11 o'clock. Jeez, I don't know where the time goes, you know? I want to get to a new spot and see if I can do some mountain biking uh, at the new spot. In the uh, oral hygiene department, uh, Water Pick makes a battery operated water pick. And uh, I really need that. I, I, I floss, I brush, but uh, I really need something uh, additional. And as soon as I started using a water pick, things improved immediately in the, uh, the mouth department. So uh, it doesn't help with what comes out of the mouth. But uh, so if you, uh, if you need to uh, use a water pick when you're out camping, this is a great little guy. Very battery efficient and it, uh, it does the job. It's not as good as a home water pick, you know, which is like a fire hose, but this certainly washes a lot of debris out of your mouth. Okay, I'm gonna try this turn off here. It's not an official campsite, but uh, I'm ride up on the pump a little bit. Oh, I'm here. This is a more, this is kind of off the beaten path. Are more off the beaten path and it's uh kind of open good sunlight very nice i think i'm going to stay here tonight and i'll go back to exploring tomorrow i covered a lot of ground today a lot of great places to camp up here in the adirondacks living free It's going to be hard to go back. I talk to the YouTubers, the really big guys. These are the guys, you know, who get millions of views. I talk to the little kid, five years old. He's opening boxes of toys and he's got six million dollars. I talk to Double D Donna. I talk to the guy who drives his car into brick walls, uh, people who light themselves on fire for ratings. And they all said the same thing. They said, you got to get the viewers eyeballs there I got your eyeballs see how did it look on me uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna clean them and take care of them and I'll give them back to you as soon as you subscribe and click like so this combo the Subaru and the uh, trailer uh, seem to be a pretty good combination for what I'm doing of course the mountain bike right uh, so it's good, I can get in and out of a lot of places here that might be harder for bigger rigs. You can bring big rigs in this area and you can get uh, some nice campsites, but uh, this one's a little more agile and nimble, right? Especially in good weather, it's great. More than one person advised me that it's hunting season. Wow. Well, all right. Wow. So you could take, it's not easy to find now, I'm gonna tell you this, if you don't know where you're going, <laughs> you're, 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 you're better for your compass. No, well, you take the Cedar River flow from Wakely Dam on a kayak and you can go in and then you go onto the Cedar River, and it's a snake. It's like twisty turning. There's campsites all along the way. Yeah. I one up on a bluff. That's where I stayed last night. Is nice. Wow.
in the uh, I'm ready for anything category. This is a uh, Phoenix LD12 flashlight. I love it. Uh, you know, so many choices available for flashlights. Uh, True Night makes some very good uh, flashlights now too at a very reasonable price. But I love, happen to like this one. It runs on a double A. It'll produce about 120 lumens. I think with the battery I have in there, it'll boost it up to 300 lumens, which is uh, certainly adequate for what I'm gonna do. I'm going out, now I'm using a two fish Velcro on flashlight holder. You know, I don't want to bring a whole big set of mountain bike lights. I don't really need them. This is if I'm out late and I'm having a good time and I forget what time it is and I need to get back. Uh, this will certainly do the job. And a couple extra batteries and I could stay out all night with this thing. Now, look, <laughs> this is a Velcro on thing. It's not meant for a rough, you know, single track and, you know, boulder hopping and all that stuff. It's got its limitations, but for what I'm doing, it's perfect. I've, uh... I had more fun than I planned on a number of times and ridden home in the dark. So now I've solved that problem. But uh, those are the most memorable times. So uh, I urge you to go out and have fun. On the road, I'm using two GPSs. One is the uh, the phone GPS, and the other is a Garmin GPS. And they both give different levels of detail. Uh, they usually agree, but sometimes one will show more than the other. For getting my passport, not going on to Mount Tremblant was actually a blessing. Uh, I've discovered places on this trip in the Adirondacks that uh, will make me want to come back. And I'm going to take a chance on this woods road. It's pretty bumpy. There's a lot of washed out road that exposed big boulders. So I think I can get around them. I hope I don't regret this. There's some big boulders. I have the car in X mode. Which is supposed to be good traction. Maybe a problem getting out of here more so than getting in. I gotta get across this water too. I'm just gonna hug the edge. All right, next boat to the rescue. Subaru's got 8.75 inches of ground clearance, and you gotta figure with some weight on there, maybe that's down to eight and a quarter. But uh, that's really welcome <laughs> on this kind of a road. <laughs> some big rocks. Gotta avoid them, get out and measure, check. Be careful. So 8.75 is good. The trailer has 10 inches of ground clearance. So, um, the vestibule offers an off-road package, which uh, gives you like another two inches, I guess like a foot. But uh, Bert pointed out to me, you know, if the car can't get over it, then uh, why go for the extra elevation, which is gonna raise, you know, the counter two inches and all that. Well, one reason is if you're gonna keep the trailer longer than, uh, then the car and your next car is going to have more ground clearance and you may want to go for the off-road package. Me, I'm okay with this. I'm fine by being turned back by a road if uh, there's plenty of other ones to choose here. Now this is a worthwhile trip. This one took me back about a half a mile off uh, the road and uh, you know we're in deep woods here and there's some other uh, benefits to this site also. Dave and I'm from New York. I'm going to tell you, uh, if you go north on 28 to Route 3 and you go up to um, Saranac Inn, there's a little road off to the left by, before you get into Saranac Inn called Floodwood Road. Been there. Oh, you've been to Floodwood I think road. I've been to Floodwood Road. It's a bunch of campsites, pine trees right on the lake, right? You can go, there's many lakes you can camp on there. You can yeah. camp, on, camp on Pollywog Pond, you can camp on Middle Pond. And, okay. And it's good canoeing. That's like the best canoeing around. That you don't want to go fact. there in the this, summer. It's this loaded is with a, locals. Hey. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. How's the, how's the camp life, amigo? Is it getting any better than this? What do you think? Uh, what do you think of camping, huh? You like it? Yeah? Okay. Well, we like you. Thank you. And you're a good boy. Okay. <laughs> So this place is a great campsite, <laughs> like all the other ones. I just like I'm stunned here by how much uh, 
how much good camping there is here. I just can't say enough about it. Uh, so I got cold last night down in the, uh, the probably the high 20s. Uh, snug as a bug in here. Here's my uh, portable uh, portable sound system. It's just a little uh, AM FM shortwave radio. And I ran it into a uh, JBL uh, splash uh, speaker system. It's great. I'm Robin Young. How do you learn to cook everything? In the kitchen, I added a uh, a magnet here, and uh, that just happens to match my timer. So when I'm boiling eggs or timing something, I can just stick it on there. And when I'm driving, I don't use that. I, uh, you know, I, I take it down and put it back in the uh, in the drawer in the storage area here. But uh, it's worked out pretty good. I've also added these tiny hooks around a couple of different places to hang things. I've got another one up here. I use them primarily for hanging lights, but uh, you can hang all sorts of stuff there. Motion detector light. So I've got a main light. This light's very bright. Uh, almost too bright when your eyes, night eyes are accustomed to the night. So I put in this motion detector light. I got it uh, runs on four AAAs, and it won't go on during the daytime. But uh, all I have to do is walk under the uh, the kitchen door, and a light goes on. It's a gentle light, you know, for uh, finding something, uh, pouring something, getting something out of the refrigerator, whatever. Of course, the refrigerator has a light in it. But uh, anyway. It's uh, all great convenience, you know, to customize things the way you like it.